Welcome back and thank you very much indeed. The Daily Guide this morning says, Moving testimony at late Major Maxwell Mohammed's trial. Nine planes for Ghana Airways. Secessionist leader flees and Baumia breaks grounds for Volta Road project. And um, the Ghanaian Times says, Fire service sacks seven personnel for misconduct. It comes to the photo of the Chief Fire Officer, Mr. Edwin Blankson. Uh, Echo Blankson. CSM outbreak. Two confirmed dead in Upper West Region. IEA Lords Government for proposed Momo tax and KIC Agritech Challenge. Two startups win $100,000 prize. The Daily Graphic. Mine caves in, killing two. Convention of the Rights of the Child Supplement and Economy will grow beyond 2020. Dankwa Institute projects, but IEA, IFS want more ambitious revenue efforts. Year of Return swells tourist figures. The publisher newspaper and uh, says that ECG for stock market. Angry speaker suspends sitting over MP's absenteeism. A man jailed six months over Tadi MPP treasurer uh, Meda. He uh, went there to give false information because he had lost his phone. And uh, when he found his phone, he went to tell the police that, well, he actually told a lie. So released the guy who I said had committed the murder. The final newspaper, TUC Hills Budget, says government has made significant progress in three years. Comments financial sector. Uh, reforms and upon Kruma showcases a comfy fruit juice in Parliament. Dr. Bomia cut sword for Eastern Corridor Hohoi Jasikan Dodo Pepesu Road um, construction. Government to engage strategic partner for Buankra Inland Port project. The BNFT uh, Ghana signs deal for nine planes, 2020 revenue targets over projected, and uh, GPHA to establish port development fund next year. Finally, the heritage blunt object killed Major Mahama. Pathologist reveals two dead in Shanzi mining disaster. Speaker strikes again against absentee MPs. And over 100 Sefiyosu community monitors get capacity training on Red Plus. Avoid overspending in 2020, IFS cautions government. My guest this morning, Mr. Kamal Dean Abdullahi, he is the, uh, the National Communications Director, Deputy, I must say, of the New Patriotic Party, and Honorable Sam Jata George is the Member of Parliament for the Ningo Pram Pram constituency here on the ticket of the NDC. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you Wednesday Jimmy. morning so far. <coughs> Sam, let's start from Parliament. Yesterday, why did you members of Parliament make the Speaker angry? Such, such that he had to suspend sitting yesterday. Well, let me say very good morning to our viewers, your good self, and to my former friend. Come out there. Yes. <laughs> Did he say former? Yes, because he's in power, he's <laughs> abandoned me. So hey, hey, I thought you guys were chatting. I thought you said I was in government, not in power. <laughs> no, yes, you're in government, but I'm in power. Oh, but I thought you said, <laughs> now you just said I was in power. Anyway, that's fine. Yeah, Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you know. Anyway. Mm -hmm. um, yesterday, mm -hmm. the minority leader issued a statement yesterday mm -hmm. because um, as members of the minority in parliament, mm -hmm. we take very seriously our role of scrutiny and oversight of the executive. Yesterday, at the time that parliament was scheduled to sit, and the major business for this week mm -hmm. is the review of the 2020 finance, financial policy right. of government. You would have expected to see the house brimming with members of the majority <coughs> whose government's business this okay. is okay. we got into the chamber and you realized that there were less than 20 out of 169 mpp mps in the wow. parliament in the chamber and so from our side you had you could count well over 40 members okay. and even though that was not our full number but i mean this is your business mm. We're supposed to be here to support you do your business, and it's your own business, and you're not even showing up. So the member for Boku uh, Central, Honorable Muhammad Yariga, stood up and quoted our standing orders and drew the speaker's attention to the the, the fact that we didn't have quorum. quorum. He was backed by the minority whip, uh, the MP Fasawasi, Honorable Montaka Mubarak, who immediately also asked on the speaker to do what was needful. So the house was suspended for a whole hour. Wow. And even after suspension of an hour, when we came back, you, you realized that we were still not even in excess of 100. Wow. Because many 
And you see, when the house is going to be full, it comes from the majority. They hold 169 okay. out of 275. We hold 106. And so, I mean, you would always give a setting margin for people who've traveled on official government business, you or, or and then those who've traveled on official parliamentary business. Okay. So you always know that there's a margin of about 20%. I mean, and then committee meetings that may be ongoing with the permission of Mr. Speaker. And so you give a margin of 20 to 25 percent of MPs who and, will not and, be and in. that the quorum will cover them. Quorum is 90 MPs. Right. Okay. Quorum is just 90, 90 MPs. MPs. You need 90 so MPs. So we shouldn't be falling short of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, many times we we do the debates or we do we conduct public business without a quorum. We just overlook it. But okay. stricto sensu, we don't we don't have quorum most right. of the time to right. start. And and it's a problem because you realize that. And and I think that part of the problem is the fact that the NPP. Uh, the executive seems to be having his hand inside of parliament too much. How? The MPs wanted to have an early primaries. Mm. You see, the NDC is done with our primaries. Every MP in parliament on the NDC side has a certain clarity of mind right now. Okay. And look, I'm a sitting MP. Two months to my primaries, I had no business sitting in the chamber. Okay. I had elections coming up. Because you had to see the grounds. Absolutely. Mm. Now, they wanted to do their elections in January. And get rid of it. Now you've pushed it to April. Pushing it to April means that people who are going to contest them are busy working in those constituencies and on those grounds right now. Mm. You expect the MP to come and sit in Parliament and debate your budget for you when his survival is up. You get it. And yeah. that is the problem. Oh, it's survival. It's a matter of survival. Absolutely. It's a, because, you see, <laughs> members of Parliament are politically <laughs> exposed people. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? You have, you have a very bad system in this country where members of Parliament are po politically exposed people. I always... I use myself as an example. Mm -hmm. Okay? I say that, look, I've been fortunate. I'm quite young. Okay? I'm a number of years away from, from 40. In fact, I'm, I'm not 35 yet. Mm -hmm. Okay? But I have served two presidents... I'm serving one term of par in Parliament. Parliament. If this was Europe or the United States, if I leave Parliament today, I can find job a job on Wall Street or exactly. in corporate Ghana, yeah. exactly. but in, in corporate in the corporate world, but in Ghana, you nobody cannot. would employ me. You cannot. Nobody so then it becomes a matter of survival, and that's why people cling on to power in Parliament. Yeah. Because, because at the, at the end of the day, yes, at the end of the day, you're retiring at what age? You, you get a question, and so mm -hmm. that's why you realize people have done five, six terms, mm -hmm. but they just keep because. The person is not ready to retire. But if we have a system where you can take the institutional knowledge these people bring mm -hmm. and, and use it to develop the private sector, we'll be better off as a country. And so you realize that that is the main problem why parliament is not getting the numbers. Wow. And so the min majority, minority leader issued a statement yesterday and said that, look, we take government business serious. Because even yesterday, to start the debates, mm -hmm. We, because the debates are scheduled. Monday, we had finance and communication. So the finance people did yes, I did mine and communications. Yesterday was supposed to be energy. Mm. And at the time we were supposed to start, two of the, of the, of the because names are given right. by, by leadership, okay. two of the people who were to lead the debates for the majority were not present. So how then do you start the debates? Would you skip them? Which would be unfair. Is, is that why your side is <clears> suggesting <throat> that the MPP has abandoned their own budget? Absolutely. I mean, if it's your budget and you are supposed to come and defend it and you're not in the chamber mm -hmm. and we who are supposed to just come and critique it are already present and you who is supposed to come and defend it is not there. It's your document. It was prepared by those in government. <sighs> come on. Well, is, is, is what the NDC is saying true? But don't blame them. The budget is empty. So, I mean, <laughs> but you, she, can, she, 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 you, you cannot say that. Oh, it's, they, plenty, it's plenty words. Zero substance. They, they, Finance minister says it will show growth in two. The same finance minister who in 2017 said that he had bought a Sempa budget and he became Midofa Dadami. The one who in 2018 said he had bought a Jumapa budget and he collapsed nine banks and has collapsed <coughs> over 400 financial institutions. A Jumagu budget. So when he tells you this will bring in Kabul, Johnny, I'm afraid for the country. Come on, Johnny, step good, in for me. Johnny, are you are morning. you abandoning your own budget? Good morning, um, my brother. <laughs> good morning to our viewers and good morning to. My former friend as he wants to just to put it so <laughs> maybe <laughs> you have accepted the title no <laughs> why why he says i'm his former friend so he remains my former friend so. <laughs> <laughs> um of course um johnny is the, the the matter we have to begin with mm. is, is 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 a matter that we all need to reach a consensus on mm. because parliament is an important institution Okay, in entrenching our democracy and in believing, I mean, in making sure that our democratic dispensation, as it were, mm. um, strives well. So, where we have a wobbling 
you know, situation mm -hmm. just because it's created artificially. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should we should all speak against it. I mean, I heard the deputy speaker of parliament, you know, admonishing members of the majority mm -hmm. to ensure that at least attendance is indeed attendance. Why why weren't they there? Yeah, no, I mean, let's let's see. We, we let, let let's be very nationalistic on this matter. It's okay. very important. That's what I'm asking. I mean, why were they there? Uh, of course, you should be asking the MPs, not Kamal. I mean, this is the question for the MPs you are, who you were are, not there. You are not for oh, the no, 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 no. You don't, you know, it's why. I'm a communication director. I should go around asking MPs why you were not in Parliament. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this question is you don't be, give it to me. But the point is, the I, point. I thought, I thought no, that, no, I, that's that's unfair. No, no, you it's said I am a communication that's, director. That's I should unfair. know yes. why they were not there. But, but I'm saying but that no, on. I have, look, I, I'm starting on a note that I my, myself, I'm not happy that happened. But come on, between me and you, yes, we do know that both of you, the parties, mm -hmm. you have your WhatsApp groups with your communicators, mm -hmm. largely who are MPs. That when an MP is not page. going to be in parliament, so, he has to so, write on WhatsApp group. No, I'm not going to be in parliament. Listen to my question. Yes, go ahead. I'm saying that. You, as mm. communications director, manage a WhatsApp group mm. where your party communicators who go on various that's platforms certain, that's are part. Yeah, it's true. And I'm saying that, have you bothered as communications director to, find to put it on the page and say, oh, members, I understand that you were not in parliament. What <laughs> is the problem? Have you bothered to find out? Easy, easy, you see, you see, you see. Let's, let's, let, I, I want us to be realistic as possible and then look at the matters and confront them as we're supposed to do. I mean, I don't, don't let us not belabor this question of why they were not there or why is it. The most important thing is that we heard the speaker mm. and it's not the mm. first time the speaker is chastising them. That's true. I mean, and mentioning this. Mm. And, and of course, you see, except to say that my brother wants to say, yes, the majority should be the portion to blame for what has happened. Mm. I mean, I disagree with him. I think that the minority also on occasions, there has been occasions where we would have to complain, or there has been complaints that some of them were not, not, I mean, in Parliament, mm. when they were supposed to be in Parliament. And you see, and I'm saying that, look, be it whatever, mm. let us condemn this act. You are representing the people of Ghana. Mm -hmm. We voted for you. I belong to a, a, a constituency. And of course, you also belong to a particular constituency. Mm -hmm. You are expecting your MP to be in Parliament, at least on an important business like this. Mm -hmm. Debating the budget and having debated it, you pro approve of it. That's when right. you approve of it, obviously our livelihood hinges on that. That's right. Because physical policies are emanating from this particular one. That's so right. if Speaker has complained, mm -hmm. I will share in the sentiment of the Speaker of Parliament and we only admonish our MPs mm -hmm. with a great of respect. If something is barring you from coming, mm -hmm. officially, like my brother, who is an, a member of parliament, has mentioned, mm -hmm. there has been occasions where maybe you are out of the country, True. there has been occasions where you are supposed to be parliamentary on parliamentary duties outside. Some percentage is earmarked for that. Mm -hmm. But no excuse, especially when we hear that some of them come to parliament, write their names at the gate, and, and then walk away. away. So creating an impression that I have attended parliament, I've come to parliament, yet I am not in parliament. And I'm, that's why I said we should make sure attendance is indeed attendance. Mm. It's not coming to fake your attendance. I mean, and I'm not here to take sides, to say whether minority or majority. What is important is that we need parliament to actually function well as a country. We need parliament. That is why we've devoted our time and voted for some George and Co. to be in parliament. We need them to discuss our, the business of the day. We need them to move on. If you have any excuse, then it should be in the known, as leadership as I uh, have, have mentioned. Mm. I heard the Speaker of Parliament saying that he wanted to convene a meeting of leadership to find out why. why? And he didn't just say, I'm convening a meeting with the leadership of majority. Mm -hmm. It's a leadership. Mm -hmm. It means that well, in indeed, Parliament, when they say leadership, it involves all. It involves all. It, involves all. it, then the goes to me, it goes to mean that everybody. indeed the minority also have a take in this. So point is, it is not proper. Mm -hmm. Let us appeal to our MPs. You are there to represent us. If you're supposed to be in Parliament to do your business, let's go and do the business. And at least at the end of the day, Ghana will be seen Sam, to be benefited. Sam, Sam George says, look, your party is getting too much in there because the MPs want to have their primaries, to have clarity of mind, and to have the peace of mind to do the business of Parliament. And you keep postponing it, and now their opponents are on the ground working. And they in Parliament, mm -hmm. after sacrificing, like we've seen some big shots lose their seats in the NDC. Well, it doesn't there, lie, it doesn't lie with Sam George to tell the MPP how to go about our internal primaries. It doesn't lie with him to tell us that. What is important is that he's done his. He's narrowly escaped. And he's, really? Oh, narrowly. Oh, he knows <laughs> that. He's narrowly escaped. He's narrowly escaped. Mm -hmm. He should thank God for that. That's fine. 
we have decided that we'll do our primaries come 25th of April next year. That is the decision of the New Patriotic Party. Mm. Just yesterday, I saw a letter flying out trying to whip a particular MP who had a dissenting view on a particular matter Rasmubar, on their side. Rasmubar. Rasmubar. Mm. Party is party. The general secretary of the NDC had caused to write and summon him into a functional executive committee meeting. Why he's supposed to take a dissenting view, as it were. And of course, before the day ends, mm. I saw something on social media. I don't know how authentic that mm. is. That, that the, is he came out to say that he had chickened out and that he's made a U-turn and that he now supports what the party says. So party, of course, is imperative and it's important. You don't tell us what we do. We have our internal meetings. That is how we have structures within the party. Steering committee, National Executive Committee and the National Council. We take decisions could the and then we move on. Of the primary I, I, I disagree with him when he says that. Absenteeism. No. Why? I just sat here and I thought that it wasn't proper they were absent. Right. Nothing is hindering them from the party side mm -hmm. not to go to parliament. Okay. You, it, it is from your own imagination. You say that because we are holding the primaries in April. In mm -hmm. any case, the meeting was supposed to be held yesterday, not in April. Whereby mm -hmm. you tell me that they are out there doing their primaries. We, no. We, so we my point is that my point is that you don't decide for us. Okay. We have decided. Decide Our parliamentarians are part of it. The majority leader is part of the steering committee. Mm -hmm. And in fact, even at National Executive Committee meeting, numbers we have a, a couple of a couple of them who are members of the National Executive Committee and they are part of it. We take decisions together. You don't come to tell us that our MPs wanted early primaries and blah blah blah. Those are figments of your own imagination. Okay. Let us move on. Okay. So. No, for one, me, one I minute, mean, yeah, it's, it's fine. It's fine I mean, for me to say it's a figment of my imagination. My imagination. Okay. Okay. We sit in parliament together with the MPP MPs. Okay. As MPs, we, we have conversations. Okay. We talk. We know what the issues are. We know we know what 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 the issues are. You can choose to downplay it. You can choose to beat around the bush. I, I'm, not I'm not beating around the bush. I'm telling you what the status quo is. What we have agreed as a party. That's what I'm not why. You just tell me. You beyond, are the beyond, 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 are beyond, telling me what just beyond your agreement. Yeah. He has colleague MPs on the other side of the aisle who who discuss. They discuss stuff. Some Georgia and you see, for me, for me, for me, for <laughs> me, the bottom line here is this: mm -hmm. whether you accept it or not. And I mean to suggest that the primaries are in April. So why should someone be worried in in November? smacks of a certain lack of understanding and appreciation of parliamentary primaries and, and, and the politics around it. If you think that you should go to the grounds when it is at least to at the least election. Escape narrowly that's so you fine. understand it. That's fine. Okay. I have survived two very <laughs> so, two very difficult elections that very few people in this country will survive. Narrowly, Whether so I was narrow or not, I defeated you <laughs> and your government and his wishes. So <laughs> you can live with that and lick your wounds. But you see the bottom line here for me mm. is very simple. That you can nobody has dis disputed the power of the party. Right. In fact, I mean, we all are sitting in parliament on the power and ticket of a party. That's right. However, parties are built on consensus. Mm. And I'm saying to you that today, parliament and the country, mm -hmm. because yesterday one whole hour, about one and a half hours of public time, was was wasted because because your MPs did not no, show uh, up in parliament. Not just our MPs, okay? your MPs too. And so and, and 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 that for me. Is a problem for the country. What are, what will be the repercussions of that? If, for example, we don't get a quorum one, two, three times, what does it mean? Well, well, no. I mean, the, the processes, the standing orders of parliament are clear. If if yesterday the quorum issue was raised, the speaker normally will suspend for an hour, um, and then the bell will be rung. Okay. We have bell a bell in parliament. The bell will be rung several times, and then if we come back and still a quorum is not reached reached upon the speaker is allowed to com to commence sitting mm -hmm. and ring the bell for another 15 minutes okay. if within 15 minutes a head count is taken and we do not still have quorum the business of the day would have to be adjourned wow. and so it means that a whole day wasted. of public business will be wasted wow. that is cost to the taxpayer bad, yeah. you understand me and so th there is need but you see mps well, this may not be the platform, uh, but the bottom line is there's a lot of there are a lot of issues when it comes to motivation to do the work. Mm. Okay, mm. and that's what I'm saying. This may not be the platform to have this this conversation, but, but, but there are real challenges. For there you are real challenges. Time. There are real challenges with the work of members of parliament, and and the fact that government is look, parliament doesn't generate revenue. Mm. Parliament functions on the back of releases from the Ministry of Finance. Right. And so when contractors are not getting paid, when NAPCO, teacher trainees, are not getting paid, mm -hmm. when ministries are not getting their releases, mm -hmm. parliament is not different. 
So you get you get you get the okay, issue. Okay. I, I can't go into too much of detail, but so you don't have the fuel to but, move. But 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 even things that you need to get committees of parliament to work. I serve on the public accounts committee. Okay. We've got reports from us that are in, in pendency from as far back as 2016. Really? The committee is ready to move out. We're supposed to do a tour. We we, we went to we went to Tamale and Tsunyani. Mm. We moved without the necessary allocations being made but look our chairman said look we cannot keep sitting down because the committee will be seen so we've moved we've okay. gone we've finished the northern and middle belt okay. we're supposed to do the coastal belt okay, okay from volta region all the way to western region we've still not received what should have been given for us to move out okay now you want us to move out again and even that one has still not been these are real challenges so, committees have challenges wow. i i mean like i'm being constrained yeah, because yeah, it's parliamentary I, business I, I, but I but it is, and you can't blame, you can't blame the, the Speaker of Parliament. But, but you can't blame, you can't blame, you can't blame Oseiche Mensah Bonsu, who is leader of the House. Mm. Because at the end of the day, if there is nothing in the kitty at the Accounts Office of Parliament, when you write to them for approval, which is a process for setting action of Parliament to happen, mm. If there is nothing, there is nothing. But the government is collecting enough. The government says, look, well, well doing very that's what I'm saying. That, that's why I started by saying uh, Parliament uh, uh, does not generate revenue. Parliament is dependent. If you take this budget for 2020, you see that the same way all ministries have been, allocations have been made. Mm, that's the same way Parliament has allocations. But, but yours and the is same a way and the, uh, allocation. Uh, but get fund. <laughs> get fund is statutory. National Health Insurance is statutory. Last two weeks, I had to move a motion. I had to make a request on the floor of the House the, the, the Friday before budget was read on Wednesday for the district as administrator of district assembly's common fund and the finance minister to be summoned to parliament mm. on the Tuesday before Wednesday. Why? Because at that time, second quarter of our district assembly's common fund right. and MP's project fund had not been had not been given. And he was coming to us to approve the 2020 budget. So he had to appear the Tuesday before and make releases that night. Mm. Okay. Before he appeared before us on Wednesday. Wow. Johnny. These are some of the challenges. Yeah. You see, and even with the ministries, yeah. you realize that even R when so yes, even when, when, when allocations are made, allocations and releases are not the same. I know, I know. So but, parliament, yeah. parliament has challenges. It's 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 it, and it goes outside of parliament. Mm -hmm. So yes, we may talk about how MPs are not doing well and it's easy MPs are easy targets to be flogged. But you need to ask yourself, if you, if you hire a driver mm. and give him a vehicle to drive as an Uber for you, and the arrangement is that you are supposed to fuel the vehicle, okay. and you don't fuel the vehicle, how is the driver supposed to work? It's a difficulty. Okay, but you see, you Come see out. Johnny, um, so to, to a large extent, I would like to share in his sentiment, as it were, um, but the point is, it sh the impression should not be created as if this lamentation that he's having today as a member of parliament mm. um, it's happening because it's today, okay. because the new patriotic party is in government. No, that is not the point. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, we've had, I mean, we, this is not the issue on the table in a way, but because it's come up, let's right. all talk about it. It's a challenge that at least our system has witnessed for a very long time. I mean, it's a complete challenge. It must be so. And it mustn't be so. That's, see, sometimes unnecessary bureaucracy within us, our own selves. You want the person to work, you've piled reports for him to peruse, and of course, come out with certain decisions mm. to be taken. Mm. But the person is not pushed. The edge to get him working is not there. Of course, I agree with him. And I think that some of some time we need to get our institutions to be up and doing when it comes to your side of the work to be done. You try to make sure we do it and then we move on. But you see, the impression once again should not be created mm. as though it's happening today because Nanado is president, because MPP is in government. Of course, under in 2014, mm. I remember. Somebody had to go to court to compel the government of the day then to release statutory funds. If you remember, it, debt fund. Yeah, I remember. They had remember. to go to court. And I remember Mona also went to court at a point under NDC mm -hmm. to push them and compel them to pay this assembly common funds. But, but at this so point, those things are saying... But, but, but at mm -hmm. this point, yeah. we have capped the statutory funds, mm -hmm. most of them. Mm -hmm. We have capped them. So the latitude to even spend is not there. But then the finance minister says, look, we have collected enough. Then the question will be, if we have collected enough and the economy look, looks good on paper, and as we heard from the 2020 budget, we are okay. Why are we not dispersing? No. Because uh, the question uh, I'm asking, uh, 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 look, Friday I'll go to mm. Nungwa to go and do community yeah. connect. 
I know that children will come up sure, with disability sure, sure. who are connected to the district assembly mm. Common fund who will come and say, I pay con school fees mm. for, for two, three terms. Mm. And sometimes it breaks my heart. And I'm saying that. Where's yes, the money? Why are we not disbursing? I'm saying that, unfortunately, the governance is not run like someone who just go get some money in his pocket and then let me pull the money out and spend. That's not how it's run. The finance minister himself, even though he's prevented documents and he's supposed to be the, um, you know, the exchequer as it were, but he himself cannot lay his hands on any money until the procedure is followed. So my point is that the bureaucratic bottlenecks that we have that is creating these problems, let's all try to see how we can work to nip that in the bud so that we'll have clarity and we're going to have ensure that our tents are indeed our tents. We do them. We don't just put them on paper and we move and then get the institutions working. It's not just the parliament alone. I believe that the other institutions will have the same problems. Mm -hmm. Now look, we've not had our money early enough to do the X, Y, Z and whatever. I am saying that this has been a challenge with us for a very long time. It is a complex business. Let's see how we can nip this in the bud and then move on as a country. What is the new Patriotic Party's plan? On what? Towards this, I mean, we, because we can't continue. Why like we, we 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 promise good governance and we are on course. I mean, he says that. I mean, I, when I, if I listen to my brother, he says the business of the day was to look at uh, look into the budget, and then of course maybe try to debate it and see where uh, to approve and where not to approve, as it were. Um, and that in 2017 we came with a simple budget. Mm. It was a fiasco. In 2018 we came with um, a Juma budget. budget fiasco. Now we've come with Mpuntu budget and he thinks that it's, there's, it's empty, there's nothing in it. Somebody who is going to do the work at debate tells me there's nothing in it. Anyway, if it's empty, you are, you, you you are better off saying at home. But I, see, I see, established you see, how you empty see, it was in the communication sector. The Asempa budget that which was empty is what has gotten his sister in school today and that we are paying for it for free SHS. Your no, sister no, is there. That, that, that's incorrect. Which, which, which of my sisters? I, I, I'm only telling which, you. Which, which of my sisters? Uh, extended <laughs> family sister. Which of, none, your extended family none, sister. None. Which of my sisters? No, no, no. He must redraw the statement. Okay, let me continue. The Asempa budget, the Asempa budget, which don't say that Sempa budget put my empty, sister in which has school. nothing no. is what I got to your yeah. constituents going to school for free. Okay, so let, me, let me let me let me put that well for you. Maybe okay. if you, so you, you have drawn, a sister, drawn the sister maybe part. maybe if you don't have a sister, I would have a sister have in constituents. school who, who I am paying oh, for. Please, 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 not, please, please, not, please. not not not. I'm saying that Sempa budget, which of course an honourable member said to say it was empty, which he debated and got physical policies passed and approved, and now is the same budget that has gotten his constituents to enjoy free SHS and paid for by government. It's the budget. They are same as simple budget. I'm telling you, the same as simple budget. See, make sure that today, I saw a news item on your um, TV tray mm. talking about production of rice and yeah. where we've gotten to today. Right. It was a great job you guys have done. Mm. And you cited factors and reasons why today we have at least bumper harvest in but, the but rice they are, sector. They are crying. You they say nobody's buying well, the rice. I'm coming there. I'm coming there. That's I'm going to get worried. I'm part of I'm part of those who are going to advocate for the for us to consume local locally produced rice. Mm. You see, the point is the uh, same budget which they chastise and they say there's nothing in it. You gave a reason why today we have rice out there. Mm. P F what? P planting for food and jobs. Mm. P PFG. Planting for food and jobs is a factor. And you mentioned it, or your own news mentioned it. He's here. That budget captured it. Today, the same budget that of course is seen as mm. celebrating the strength of the economy mm. and growing from negative or I mean from three point something to where we are today and celebrated in the whole world. It's the same budget that saw other. So for me, come on, let me sit down let, and let me step empty, in. Let me step in. I'm, empty I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the, in the rice empty thing comments. And the agree thing. Look, we have mm. planting for food and jobs. Yeah. We have planting for exports and rural development. Mm. Then we have rearing for food and jobs. Yeah. Now the farmers are complaining. Yeah. They are complaining because they have tilled the dead, planted, mm -hmm. harvested, yeah. and nobody is yeah. buying. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking, look, before we set up free SA, um, mm -hmm. uh, planting for food and jobs. Yeah. We knew that we we're getting improved seedlings. Yeah. We knew that we we're getting fertilizers. Mm -hmm. We knew that we we're getting uh, extension offices. Yeah. We knew that we we're having double portion of rain. So mm -hmm. we were going to get a bumper harvest. Did we plan for the bumper harvest as we have now? Because the rice is rotting away. We, we no, it's not rotting away. Rice rice is not as um, perishable as you think. So when you see when you, when you have like, when you have I mean, moisture, of course, of course when you have, have moisture, moisture but no, when you have moisture, I'm not saying the... it cannot get spoiled, but I'm saying it's not as perishable as you may think. Okay, it is the, not the, at least, of course. I mean, that is why the government um, contemplated and anticipated the building of building um, warehouses. And today, under the planting for food and jobs, we have warehouses dotted around the country. I've seen where, those warehouses; just, they are just block with but, zinc. But they are warehouses. No.
No, it's not just come out. You come I, from. I can you, tell. Is he, is come he, out. You is come he, from the north. Come I, out. Yes, I have visited some. From that's why I can tell you for sure come what out. buffer stock is come doing. Come out. You come from yes. the north. Yeah. There are warehouses yeah. or silos mm -hmm. for cereals, mm -hmm. and then there are warehouses for tomatoes. Mm -hmm. There are warehouses mm -hmm. for onions. Mm -hmm. There are warehouses for yams, which mm -hmm. are bulky. Yeah. The warehouses you have. Mm -hmm. Tell me, in all honesty, mm -hmm. from where you sit mm -hmm. and coming from the north. Mm -hmm. Are they enough to deal with the situation oh, that we have? You had nothing. At least you have one. Government initiated one warehouse for every district. You had nothing. Mm. At least you have one now. It's a step. Mm. It's, a, it's a going concern. No? It's not like just getting up and giving the whole world everything that they need at once. Okay. No. We are talking about a government that has excellent initiatives. A government that thinks about the people. And of course comes with interventions to at least cushion the plight of the people. Mm. That is the kind of government we are talking about. Responsible government. No reckless government who will tell you I will build training colleges when at the end of the day in their manifesto they say that you come and they cannot show they cannot point at any training college built. Not a reckless government that will come and tell that we have built a hospital in Wasampoho, you go there and there's no hospital. Not a reckless government that will tell you go to Garut in Pani, we have built hospital, you go there and there's no single block laid. We are not the people. Let's talk we about say, the, the plan we for say, the bumper harvest. We have looked at the farmers. We thought that look, and I want to greet their great minister, my own uncle, mm. Honorable Akutu. Great man. Great, great man. The man talks about a Greek and his works are Greek and he's actually implementing and doing better. Buffer stock, okay, was nowhere. Mm. Under the MPP, go and look at the food they are storing. Look at the way they are making sure that they present they themselves as off takers for farmers today. Mm. The farmers have had more, but there's an attitude in place that we need to actually fight. Which is? Which is involving all of us. Which is? Our penchant, our love, our lust for imported rice. But we are importing 1.3 billion. It's wrong. Look, right what now. Nigeria, look, you know what has happened in Nigeria? Of course, people are blaming Nigeria for closure of, closure of the borders. I checked. One month of their border closure mm. ensured that locally produced rice, okay, mm. over $300 million worth was sold. Look, in Nigeria, so, over three, and I'm saying that. So, so what is our initiative? Yesterday, I also mentioned it. I said, ah, we have initiated this. We have the food in place. Mm. You see, we have an attitude, loving what is important. Can we, one, step up education, two, quickly and immediately curtail the importation of certain uh, what was a part rice? of the planting for food and job at the end? I'm asking this it because should be. if, if you say you're going to plant, um, yes. you have improved seedlings, fertilizer, yeah. and it, it, not, it should be. And you know that at the end you're going to mm -hmm. get a bumper harvest. Did you plan for the bumper harvest when it comes? I what answered, do you do with I it? Answered the first, I answered it earlier when I said that we had planned to have warehouses to make sure that at least food will not go bad. Some storage will be done so that at least planning the time that we have, of course, production, I mean, uh, sale will continue. Because if, if, have if it. school feeding is eating that, imported that, rice, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. If it's school true. feeding. No, no, it's not true. Whoever says school feeding, school feeding is School feeding is not. That I can say emphatically that it's not true. I will, I will stock, share the story buffer, with you. School feeding is now done by buffer stock. Mm. I mean, uh, school feeding is done by gender ministry. However, the food or the rice that is supplied is supplied through buffer stock. Okay. That is what is done. And it's locally okay. produced wrap, wrap rice. Up. Let's That's take a bite on sure. this one. But you see, the point I'm trying to make is that finally, Ghanaians, finally. let us consume what we, we, uh, we have produced ourselves. Okay. Let us develop the love for what we have. Okay, let's try to do that. When we do that, we're going to benefit. Okay. We don't, you see, it's not government doing everything. We ourselves, those listening to me, my brother has constituents. He needs to talk to them. I need to talk to my people. Okay. You need to talk to your people. Mm. Let us all see. I like. I love this man, um, CTFM. What's his name? Um, Samez. Mm. He's out there. He said, "Look, I am appointing myself as an ambassador for what? Mm. The consumption of local rice mm. to encourage the consumption have, of local rice." We have done rice. that campaign. And I think we, we have done no, that campaign we here continue. so many times. We should. We, look, when we started with Thomas Abanga, remember Thomas Abanga mm. up north? Yeah. We started with him. He has. Plenty acres Don't throw of your farm. hands in despair. My no, brother, it's I'm a process. Not, I'm not. We need to change I am not. the attitude I'm saying of that Thomas Abaga yes. planted a lot of rice. Mm. And he told me the frustration he Abdullah had Abanga. trying to meet, uh, yeah. you know, even government to, to buy into his idea. Today he's in Liberia. Oporia came for him. Yeah. And he's planting 
maybe a case of rice I met him for man. Liberia. You know he's him. He's my friend. Yeah, he's my friend. He said in his own country the blockade well, that he it. had to face. Mm. He went to Liberia and he's making money. And so I'm he saying only it's comes not here all about that. We money. have the market in place, but we have allowed the importers to cloud us out. Okay, it's wrong. Thank you. Yeah. The some, government must be firm on this. Some take a bite of this. Let's start from the free SHS. Yes, I mean he he drew me in there, but I I was quiet and allowed him to do what he he wanted to do, but. Let me state for a record, first and foremost, that that assertion that I have a sister who is enjoying from the benefits of this. You may have a sister. Why? Okay. It's not true. Mm -hmm. Okay. My last sister your is doing your master's. How about your constituents? My constituents who you claim they don't give me free senior high school to mm -hmm. come back to me to help with paying for some of the other oh, items oh, okay. that they are still paying for because it's it is not completely free. <laughs> okay. When you tell me to forget about it because you don't deal with the reality of the situation. You sit on your high high horse, you sit in your ivory towers of the Flagstaff House and yeah. party headquarters and think that what happens in for ordinary Ghanaians, we should stop, 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 stop. When I have a constituent who lives in Tripoli, mm -hmm. you place her son at St. John's in Achimota, St. John's Second Senior High School. Mm -hmm. And then you expect that child to leave Tripoli every day and come to St. John's because he's made a day student. So they come to she you came to me for money to, <laughs> to rent to an apartment day. for that boy. Wow. <laughs> a 14-year-old child who's now living on his own in a single room at St. John's because he was made a day student. Are you student. for real? I'm telling you, these are the realities that we are facing. Let me give you another example. This, so, this free SHS, and it's got, it's, it's, that's why we said we need to have a review of how it's been implemented. Mm -hmm. A, a boy I met, a boy it. I met, no, so we will not cancel, cancel it. it. Cancel well, it, if that fine. is what you want to do. No, that's what you're doing. We, we, started it. we started the free SHS in 2015, 2016 mm. with 10,490 students. We targeted we it. What? Free now, what I'll tell you, let me, and, and I'm going to give you real examples because I deal with the ordinary mm -hmm. Ghanaians. You don't. Mm -hmm. Listen, a young boy whose parents died, okay, mm. he's, he's an orphan. I met him in the 2016 campaign and I said to him, look, I'm going to take care of you because I'll put you in school, in, in Ingo Senior High School. But at the time we were doing the campaign, it was way past. So he had to go in 2017, 2018 okay. academic year. Right. But he was due to have gone to school 2016, 2017. Mm -hmm. But because he, he was an orphan and nobody could help him go, he couldn't go into the senior high school. Then you roll out free SHS. When you roll out free SHS, what is said is that, oh, because they've rolled out free SHS, mm -hmm. honorable, you don't need to pay again. He's going to go to the school. This orphan goes to the senior high school. And the school headmaster says, look, I want to take you. But the directive from the Directorate of Education in Accra mm. is that I cannot take you on because you, can, you do not qualify for free SHS simply because you didn't go in at the time you were supposed to go in. Okay. So any student who misses <laughs> for any reason mm. your entry, so an orphan who has no parents, who has no help. Are, are you saying that that is, child is out of school now? I have had to pay for him to be in. So okay. he's he, okay. currently currently so he's, he in, he's in form three because, because he missed his original Absolutely. time. he's in form entry. three. Okay. I am paying his fees every year. So so you you would sit here and say that everybody in the senior high school system that's not true. Those who could not meet make, make it into senior high, into senior high school mm. the year they were you have you have cut them out. Okay. And now I'm asking myself why should an orphan who has nobody be deprived of free senior high school when Kamal? And some of the appointees in government who have children who are in senior high school level are benefiting from when he can pay. That's the problem of the free senior high school. You talk okay. about a growing economy. Now, let me read your own budget. The budget that was presented by the, the finance minister. To give you a real picture of it, mining and quarrying. It dropped from 10.6% at the end of the year to 7.2% in 2019. That's a drop of almost of over 3 percentage points in the mining and quarry sector. And you think that this is an economy that is growing. Take manufacturing. <laughs> manufacturing dropped from 9.5% to 4.1%. Mm. And you're telling me you have one district, one factory. Take electricity. It dropped from 19.4% to 5.5%. 20, in 2018. In 2019, it's dropped even further to 1.8%. These are your own finance minister's figures. Water and sewage. It has dropped from 6.1% to negative 7.1%. Mm. Negative 7.1%. Construction has dropped from 5.1 to negative 8.5. So your point is that what? The data doesn't What's support the things the finance minister no, said? No, the data doesn't support the, well, what the finance minister said that we are growing, we are doing well, and that, and, and that Kamal is regurgitating here. These are the real figures. These are so not me. Well. These are not me saying. This is the finance minister's oh. budget. This budget is the 2020 budget presented by your government. Don't worry, I have to answer. Fantastic. To it. I'll respond right. to it. Don't worry. I'm going to the services sector. When you take the services sector, 
<laughs> you look at areas like like finance and insurance. Mm. It's growing in the negative, mm. negative eight percent. You look at you look at areas like health and social work mm. that affect the ordinary Ghanaian because you refuse to open the hospitals your mama built. Going from twenty two point six percent, it has dropped to sixteen point two. Is it percent. as simple as that? As simple as opening offices that, that will improve social work? No, hospitals. When the hospitals are, are the hospitals health is health and social work. It is. The access to healthcare is what improves the statistics on healthcare. Mm -hmm. So when there are hospitals that have been built that you've closed down, when you have a, a, a quaternary service center, like the University of Ghana Medical Center, and you've shut it down for parochial reasons, and you're not opening it, and you're not using it, the Bank of Ghana Hospital, you're not using it, the Maritime Hospital, you're not using it, Co district, assembly, district uh, 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 level hospitals that were built by John Mahama, you've, you've, left them, you've left them to become breeding grounds for snakes. Look at what happened. When the, look, at the, look at the ambulances. In the healthcare sector, just just on Sunday, we saw the accident in in the Dinsha area. They needed ambulances, and your your minister for special initiative says that you are not going to release those ambulances till twenty twenty. The, 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 the minister year. for health explained uh, to me once that well, uh, they they're waiting the, for the full complement of it to come before they dispatch, they put it out there because and, and, they and can't see, tell exactly the problem, where to the, take the, the problem but of this government is a wisdom problem. They will be released. The problem of this government is a wisdom problem. This government does not think. Oh. Yes, no, no, because worry, listen, worry. listen. Right. if you're a government that thinks, if you're a government that cares for your people, if you're a government that has the milk of human compassion running through your veins, and you're not only thinking about winning the next election, and what is politically savvy, and the optics of politics, you will not come and pack 96 ambulances mm. for over two months in front of parliament, and Ghanaians are dying. And you are telling me that that is not an emergency. You are waiting for an emergency. What emergency is he Johnny, waiting for? I need to respond He's waiting for a correct? tsunami to happen in Ghana before he will release the ambulances. Don't you know that in Ghana? Look, it is it is it, it smacks of a lack of compassion for you to suggest that you want to get all two hundred and sixteen or two hundred and sixty ambulances before you distribute them. Yes, Wait, especially you, seven. especially you, who comes from the northern part of Ghana, where you have when you take the Ghana Statistical Services Living Index. Some of the most deprived parts of this country are in the northern part of Ghana where you come from. Where an ambulance is a matter of life and death for people where you come from. And you will sit here today and support a, a, a health minister who says that your people are Johnny, not a priority. I am drawn in every the area, I every now? country. Oh, yeah. Please, you you threw me several times Sam, and I kept quiet. Sam, the minister Listen, said, the minister the, said uh, look, you the, cannot the compare, minister has not, has not handed Johnny, over no, the ambulances. No, you see, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. We know what is going on. <laughs> what the, is going look, on? The, the, the Minister for Special Initiative says that, look, these ambulances were bought under her, her, her program. <sighs> yes, the health minister may say, but these ambulances were not under his his purview. Yeah. They're under Hawa Kumsen. She said 2020. And she said it yeah. is in 2020 she'll release it because it's an election issue. Look, and I'm saying to you that anybody who has the milk of human compassion, who sees pregnant women mm. who are in crisis having to wade through water, when there are ambulances that could take them, ambulances that are fully fitted, functional, sitting in front of Parliament House, every day we pass in front of them, we drive past them as representatives of these very same people. As a representative of these people, I see their taxpayers' money has been used to buy an ambulance that will save the life of a young man who was involved in an accident. That young man dies. That pregnant woman dies. Because someone says that until you are ready to take care of places like Ayawa so West Wagon, which is in the heart of Accra, East Legon, mm. places like Trasaco, then areas like Panchendo, in my constituency, earlier areas like Kasina Nankana, areas like, like Bumprugu Yoyo. Okay. Look, you you have you. deprived you. areas in this country. You. If you say that those areas, you will treat all of them as the same, that's why I said it's a wisdom problem. Johnny. Okay, thank you very much. They had so much wisdom. And they talked so much about Ghana. And they were so compassionate that they made sure, at least, mm. that beautiful ambulances, as he rightly put it, and mm. described it, okay, were mm. sent to all those areas when they were in power. What did you do? You told the whole world that you're going to we take 10% of your salary, government appointees, to build chips compound. How many did you build? That's the person with compassion. Wait, 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 please, 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 please. hundred and quiet. No, 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 no. Please, allow me. You asked the question. How many did you say? I'm giving you information. information. That's the person with compassion. hundred and five. You went out there to Bunkuru Yoyo. -yo. You cited it. Gave, got a carpenter there. Got benches. And told them that this is a best makeshift beds for hospitals. You got tricycles. We call them Abu Boda. Got tents on them. 
That person with compassion, oh, knowing the nature of the roads in that Bukuru Gujo. But you told the, us that that was not please, the best. Please, so I you am, were coming no, to I, change please, it. Let, let me flow. I was very quiet. Mm. Then you gave those tricycles to some people, some villages, for votes, and told them these were ambulances, knowing very well that this was not befitting enough. A government of the day comes and tells you, mm. I have an initiative. I am going to make sure every single constituency in this country, mm. I procure an ambulance, in fact, a befitting one, a well-fitted, better, well-designed, as he described it, to give to that particular constituency. You claim you have compassion more than that government. Why are you not distributing Sad. them? You are telling me that you have so much wisdom. Why are you not distributing today, them? Oh, please, we will, don't worry. I, I answered this the last time. Mm. And of course, you even told him what is on course. We have told you clearly that yes, what they said we could not do. They themselves told the whole world that we are lying, that we could not procure ambulances. We have done that. We have some on the high seas coming, some currently at the port, being clear, it's in the process. You rush and tell us, and tell us that, go and distribute them. You don't have compassion. You, look, you see, the NDC will not cease to amaze me. They sit here, claiming they are compassionate. Mm. Then they cannot even give what is befitting to the people out there. You went and got tricycle about 10 of them or 15 they, of them and give to people. Much now let's move on. In the area he, of says, he says manufacturing sector has nosedived. No, let's, let's Growth is not. I am on the ambulances. I'm telling you, this is an initiative from Nanado and we need to praise him for it. He deserves a second term. He's indeed somebody who thinks about Ghana. He's somebody who cares less about himself, but he cares about Ghana. And, the and he says the that the ambulances as, are as out. It's not about election. That is it. Again, again, you see, again, that's what they do. They think we are them. We are not like NPP. I mean, sorry, NDC. You can't be like We that. are not like NDC. You can't be Who like will go and even rent a power badge? Bring it and pump and punch it. They are all that dancing because I've rented a power badge to get power. There, you forgot that about NDC. Power, there's there's power, I am telling you what they did. They power rent power it. Just to rent a power badge. You have brought it and you were here with drums that I have rented a power badge to come and get power. There's, there's, power a, power like there's a pregnant woman come out this morning who is being taken to the hospital in a taxi and the relatives may be watching TV3 yeah. at this point. They yeah. won't be happy if we're saying that the full complement of things are not ambulance on the heat. Because you see, yeah. the minister told me mm. that they have ordered 307 ambulances mm. for 265 or so mm -hmm. districts. And I said, if there are extra, like 25, which will make up for 307, yeah. there should be a reason for those extra. So at least those emergency situations so should be that, for. So that yeah. the minister cannot then say yeah. that they don't know where to take the ambulances to because mm. we should have an emergency response data. Mm. He should not be telling us that. You know, if you, if, if now, you, yesterday, yeah. on Joy FM, yeah. after telling us to hesitate, yeah. he says the contractor has not handed over the ambulances to them. Yeah. Then there's another school of thought that says all the things may not have been fitted yeah. into it. Mm. We are getting three or four different strands of explanations mm. for one ambulance. Mm -hmm. Can we trust the explanations? Well, Ghanaians, watching TV Trade this morning, your president has promised that he's going to procure ambulances. The NDC says he could not do it. He has done it. The president has made sure that some ambulances are in now, is in the process of being completely received, and then, of course, Every single constituency and every single district for that matter would have an ambulance, so properly called an ambulance. That is the difference between us and the NDC. Ghanaians, the president tells you he cares about you. He will not sit down and use your money for nothing, but he will use your money to benefit you. That is why you're going to have the ambulance. You see, the point is talking about come and distribute it. The same people who says you cannot have it, who gave you tricycles, where you could not even sit, they are the same people who say they are now compassionate and that they should come and share the ambulances to you. Ghanaians are speaking do, to you. Let us know, all do we know when the situation will come? It will be done and it is proper that you hold us to our words. We have said we will supply the ambulances. We have said we will do that and we have procured it. Finance Minister, thank you very much this morning for what you people have done for us. But see, let R me continue. One minute and then we'll wrap Yesterday, up. Yesterday, something wait, happened in Parliament. The time is up. The Information Minister had course. We sat here the last time, and then, of course, one NDC man was here telling me that it is a fiasco again. We don't even have one single district. It a, was a factory. A, a we don't even have it. No, it was, it was Mutala. Mutala. Mutala right, said right. even Mutala. one factory. Mutala. One, one. We cannot show for it. The same Ekunfi. Mm. They had their now deputy national organizer. He went there with camera. He's from that area. Snapped. He said, oh, bare land, nothing here. They are all out there running, telling lies that they want to build a factory. Just yesterday. 
a sample of what has been produced from that factory was shown in Parliament. The fruit juice. Yeah, a sample of what is there. The NDC we says they sacked that factory. We have said 58 factories are on. You see, we are not, you see, when the, the, the NDC say they started the Kofi factory, so you don't take they, they, credit they do for it. Oh, the person came, went and took a picture of Bell and said there was nothing. Now he said he started it. Oh, what are you talking about? Is he, well, let's get serious. Ghanaians are watching us. I am telling who they are. These are reckless people. Mm. These are people who do not think, and yet they tend to argue to tell us that we don't think. Are you, are you not These being, are people who are tell you they have wisdom hard. when they will never do. Ah, but when he said we didn't have wisdom, it wasn't, wasn't it too harsh? These are people who claim they have wisdom. You have wisdom, and you cannot even do what put one, two, three, okay, to get a, a particular number that will benefit Ghanaians. My point here is that okay. we are not going to delve into rhetorics. Okay. We are not going to dwell on rhetorics. Mm. We are going to make sure that reality is what we see. Action is what we see. You can call the budget empty. Mm. You can say we are not growing. When, in fact, the figures show that we are growing. Clearly, when you ask me today, what is the growth rate of the Ghanaian economy? I can tell you it's 7 point something percent. Okay. And when you ask me in 2016, what was the growth rate of the Ghanaian economy? I'll tell you it was 3 point something percent. Clearly, there's a difference. But, we have but, augmented but, it. But so you, you don't sit you compare, here. And you then, compare 2018 to yeah. 2019, not 2016 to 2019. Oh, when they were there, I'm talking about when they, were, what they left for yes, us. Yes, but I'm saying... The when they were running running to IMF for policy credibility The, the economists will tell you not to do about that. that the rebasing is done, you know, with the succeeding year. You don't well, spread it out. They were handed over Ghana to manage. I I am telling you the status quo they left for us. Okay. It's important. Ghanaians must know the difference. Okay. They didn't have ambulances. We have ambulances. Okay. They didn't have free estate. We have free estate. They, they didn't have... There, they didn't have ambulances. there was no food. We were importing there were, there more were 50, rice. Today we are having rice. There were 52 ambulances according to the Ghana Health Service. You know, 52, eh? you know, 52 John, ambulances John, John, according 52, to the Ghana... 52 uh, ambulances. Yes. Ghana Health In addition service. to the tri cycles. How many tri cycles were there? In addition to the tri cycles. Johnny. 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 Like the people who want to take Ghana, that alternative. Yeah, yeah, take take one minute and let's yeah. go. Uh, the is alternative time is, is in this is he, is, he, is he, when he sits here and works this lyrical, you ask how many chips compounds were built. 105 of them were built, if you don't know, I'm telling you. <laughs> and these this chips compounds okay. are what provide no, no, primary no, no, care like in the most rural of areas. Like Ghanaians see the hospitals <laughs> that we built. The only adult vehicles mm. that were brought in for, for, for as mobile healthcare vans right. that you have I'm left that, that you I'm have left you have left to rot. Mm. When we were speaking, I was very quiet. You've mm. left to rot. Those are the things that you think that Ghanaians forget. Okay, your your focus is on providing money for national security to go and do special operations oh, in this budget. Oh, how how? Oh yes, it's in the budget. 120 million Ghana cities. Yeah, debate it. 120 yeah, million Ghana. Who says we are yet to debate it? We are, yeah, we are yeah, debating to debate it. Come on, when we were speaking, when, when we were speaking, I was very okay. quiet. You need Go to be decent. 120 million. 120 million Ghana cities is being given to Azubu and his guys for special operations. Oh, but you can't say oh. that. It's in the budget. Nas yes, Ministry yes, of yes. National Security. Ministry of Azubu and guys. Please, when you when you were when you were throwing a lot of a lot of claptrap around, I was quiet. So sit down and stomach it. So I shall allow you to rabble rouse. Keep quiet and stomach it. 120 million. It's here in the budget. It's on page two two three in appendix four A. Ghanaians must be aware of this. 120 what, million. What's your difficulty with it? We've seen Azugu and his boys and their special operations in Ayao, so West Wagon. Mm -hmm. And even 2020, which is an election year, they're asking for this. Again, if you even go further in this budget, on page 233, <laughs> government communication. Oh, your taxpayers' money, 6 million, is going to be used to pay Kamal Din. 6 million Ghana cities is being taken out of the taxpayers' money to pay government communication. Kamal Din and his goons, who sit at party office and do communication. That is what this government is using your taxes for. And then they wake up and tell you that they are a government that care. This is it. Okay. Cost of government flagship program. Appendix 6, page 233. 6 million Ghana cities for government communication. Okay. Kamal Din Abdullah is a deputy national communication director of the hey, NPP. Hey, this is what you are doing. Sam George is the honorable member of parliament for the Ningo Pram Pram constituency in the Greater Akari region. The ticket of the NDC.